Hey all, in this video I'd like to share with you a really powerful opening trap which happens in the Queen's Gambit Declined, as well as the funny story behind the trap. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov from the Remote Chess Academy, and without further ado let's go ahead and get started. Here after knight to c3, knight to f6, we've got the most classical position of the Queen's Gambit Declined, one of the most played openings of all. And first of all, let me show you the two games where the trap happens on the first place, and after that I'm gonna show you how specifically you can reach the position to execute the trap, okay? This position happened in the game between Avi, who was one of the world champs, against Rubinstein, who was one of the top players of the past, real contender for the world champion title. And this position was black to play, and Rubinstein played knight to h5. A fairly good positional move, as taking the bishop would normally be a good idea for black, but it failed due to a very unexpected tactical shot, knight takes d5. And the point here that after black takes the knight, white goes inside with bishop to c7, all of a sudden trapping the queen on the d8. A fairly unusual tactical construction where you can trap the black's queen on its original square. And just to answer your potential question, let me take a move back here. In case black captures the bishop instead of the knight, which is definitely better for black, which is which is actually black played in the game, that white recaptures with the, their own knight, and along the way white won that black's pawn on d5 and certainly got a really, really great position and won the game afterwards. Two years later, the same player Rubinstein was playing black against another player, Alexander Alohin, another world champ. And of course, definitely Black was unhappy with how it worked out for them in the past, and therefore he decided to play differently. Therefore, this time, instead of playing h6, like he did previously, and followed by knight h5, he decided to play in the center. So he played knight to e4, putting the knight there, White decided to retreat bishop f4, and Black played pawn to f5, fixing their strong knight on f5, and thinking that this time is definitely going to be much better for them, but all of a sudden knight takes d5 came anyway, and it turns out that Black still fell into the exact same trap as after a pawn takes, there is still bishop to c7 winning the queen once again. Now the fun thing about this trap is that it was named, it is called Rubinstein Trap, Funnily enough, named after the victim of the trap, not the guy who delivered the trap. I'm not really sure who and why decided to do it that way, but maybe somebody wanted to humiliate Rubinstein, I don't really know. If you know the, the story, then let me know in the comments below. But anyway, funnily enough, it is called Rubinstein Trap, even though who suffered so badly from this trap himself. Now let me show you specifically how you can get to the position to deliver the Rubinstein trap. And by the way, Rubinstein trap obviously is just one of the traps possible in the Queen's Gambit position. If you want to know other, I've got another video called 5 best chess opening traps in the Queen's Gambit. I'll link it down below so that you can know all the traps that you got to be aware of. That, that video, by the way, got over a million views, so those are really worthy traps. All right. Anyway, so here you play pawn to c4, knight to c3, very classical moves of the queen's gambit, and you may play the white's moves in different order, it's not that critical. At some point you'll need to trade pawns on d5, and then you just finalize your development, something like this. Then you play bishop d3, black usually plays pawn to c6, so that from here the pawn protects the pawn on d5, also somewhat prevents the white's knight from jumping potentially to b5, it's a standard move. Here you need to castle. Casting is really important, by the way. Black goes rook e8, as it's also one of the main lines here. And in this position, I suggest that you play queen to c2. Even though rook to c1 is possible as well, because as you can see in these traps, it's just important for white to have one of their heavy pieces along this file, which is gonna be opened in the future. But queen to c2, I think, is a bit more provocative. This way, you're putting this battery against the black's pawn on h7, somewhat provoking them to start reacting to these, and that very often they'll play pawn to h6, and after you respond bishop to f4, very often your opponents will think, hey, I can keep chasing this bishop by playing knight to h5, and now this bishop has nowhere to retreat, so your opponent thinks that he's winning your bishop, but in fact, here comes knight takes d5, this trap which we've been analyzing, and after pawn takes, you play a bishop c7, all of a sudden black realizes that they are losing. 
Here comes a little tactical quiz for you. In this position, it, it is white to move, and it's actually the position from the game which we analyzed a minute ago between Alexander Alochin playing white against Rubinstein. At the end of the day, they came to this position, and now your task is to find the winning move for white right here. And of course, write it down in the comments below if you can find it. And if you wish to improve your chance beyond opening traps, then you may also attend my free masterclass The Best Way to Improve a Chess, where I handhold you and show you the ways that used by my students to achieve great improvement at chess, and you hopefully will be my next success story.